board game banter reviews railways of the world specifically today we're going to play the railways of mexico version so railways of the world is a pretty popular title something i've had the great fortune of playing just recently and learning this is a great game uh, in fact this was probably one of my favorite games i played last year for the very first time um, it's in kind of the the two hour gamers game category um, but a lot of fun, a lot of options. I really, really enjoyed it um, and have wanted to play it more and more. So one of the purposes of this video review and walkthrough uh, will be that I can share it with uh, some of my friends and game groups as we are, will hopefully play this game together soon. So hopefully watching this will give you an idea of how to play and the rules so that when we get together we can dive right in. So I'll provide an overview of how the game works with some of the rules. Uh, we'll walk through several of, several turns. I'll talk about the cards, the mechanics, some of the decisions required, how scoring is is uh, dealt with in this game, and give you some overall thoughts and opinions. But just in general and right up front, this is a game I really enjoy um, and want to play lots more. In fact, I've been looking at some of the other expansions. So Railways of the World is a is the base game, and it comes with at least in this version, comes with its own expansion for Railways of Mexico. So the, the base game is the Eastern United States map, and it is very large. Quite large, maybe, maybe a little too large. And this Mexico map is certainly smaller, much more manageable. There you can see it on the screen. There are a number of other additional expansions, Western United States, Great Britain, Europe, uh, and recently a North America that in, you know, encompasses Canada and provides a way to tie the Western United States and the Eastern United States maps together. Um, there's even a couple other expansions in this series. The uh, Railways of the World base game is used for some of them, but some of them are also standalone games. Um, there's a Railways Through Time. That's an interesting twist that pro provides various maps of different ages throughout history. And so while thematically it doesn't make sense, you are traveling through time. Sounds pretty weird, but from what I've heard, uh, a pretty, pretty good variant on the game. Um, there's also Railways Express. That's a dice version. Um, and even a card game available. So lots of options that fit with this title. Uh, it has a pretty long and I wouldn't say troubled history, but the game has gone through several different iterations. There's slightly more advanced versions. Uh, it used to be Railway uh, Railroad Tycoon, but some of the, the official branding was lost somewhere along the ways, and it, it's now in its current iteration as Railways of the World. But nonetheless, it's a fantastic game. Um, you'll also find Steam and Age of Steam. Uh, I can't keep it all straight. But this is the version that I've played that I own uh, that I enjoy quite a bit. So let's get into Railways of the World and how the game works. So you'll see on the map that there are a number of city locations. So in this case, Mexico City. And all of the cities on the board are a color and then have a number. The number indicates the number of cubes that will begin on that location at the start of the game. The map is broken up into hexes uh, put together and then various terrain across the map. So here you clearly see mountain range. Um, the, these cost more to, to build across. You also have open that's just plain green territory. Um, those are the cheapest to build on. Anything with water, so that would be with a river or possibly uh, you know, something like this down here that um, is heavily coasted. I'm not sure on this one whether people would say water or not. There's a sliver there, a little bit ambiguous maybe in some cases, but generally speaking, it's very clear. Uh, this is a water hex, this is a water hex, this is not. It's just a plain old open terrain. Uh, and then the mountain ranges are, are very well marked. So that's the basics of the map. Your hexes, your cities. The cities are a color and have a number. Um, and then, of course, a, a name. Uh, for the most part, the 
the names are are really just used for geographical context, but you will find a major lines option when a route is completed between two specific cities. There's a bonus provided, kind of a longest route. Um, I won't quite say it's the same as Ticket to Ride, where you complete your destination cards, but roughly the same idea. So one of the things you'll notice about the colored cubes, these represent the goods in the game. Uh, and I think somewhere on, on the Geek, people have labeled them what what types of goods they represent. I don't know what it is offhand, but you know, you've got your, your black for coal, uh, your red maybe for cattle, um, yellows, pro whatever, it doesn't really matter. But one of the things you'll notice is that the cities have a color type as well. And what this indicates is that the goods of a particular color can only be delivered to a city of the same color. So the fact that these two cubes, and, the, and these are all randomly placed at the beginning of the game, but these two red cubes starting out in Mexico City, um, co coincidentally, can only be delivered to another city that is red. And on this particular board, there's only one at the very top of the map, El Paso, which is also red. And those are the only two. So red being really the most difficult to deliver good in the game. So when you deliver a good, and we'll get into how that works, it can only go to a city of its color. It can pass through other cities, can never pass through its own city. But ultimately, you're trying to ship these goods, these cubes, to cities of their color. And that's how the game will work. You'll see there's a very large scoring track. Um, and every time you deliver a good, you will work your way up the scoring track. Ultimately, the winner will be determined. Another very interesting element about this game... Oh, b before we get to that, let me cover the fact that there are gray cities for which there are obviously no gray cubes on the board. Gray cities are considered unurbanized, and throughout the game, there, there are options to urbanize a city. So one of the things you can do on your turn, and, and we'll get into all the actions available, but you can urbanize a gray city by placing one of these uh, lovely little colored tiles, these new city tiles, onto a gray city. So if I were to urbanize this city, I would turn it into a purple city. Uh, I would draw then two additional cubes from the bag, and I have now successfully urbanized that into a purple city. Right, And so that's opening up additional options, and strategically I may want to do that throughout the game to provide additional shipping lanes or locations to which I can ship goods. But you'll see here that red is not one of those options. Again, red being the kind of the scarce, maybe uh, most difficult, but the other colors you do have the option. Quite a few, you can see the gray cities here in the middle. Um, quite a few scattered across the board, but strategically it might make sense as you're over here, uh, the closest yellow, um, you know, there are only a couple of yellow on this board as well, you would potentially want to urbanize one of these gray cities into a yellow city so that you had somewhere closer to ship these yellow goods, mm, possibly. Okay, so I was going to talk about the other interesting element is the money. Now, contrary to many games, this mechanic is pretty unique in that you don't start with any money, but in order to get money throughout the game, you take out bonds. And when you take out a bond, you obviously get the money indicated on the bond, but you never repay the bond. And every turn when you collect your income, you will pay a thousand dollars worth of interest per bond. So you have denominations of one and five. Um, they're, the, they're the same really. F five bonds or one bond, five thousand dollars of interest, one thousand dollars of interest. <clears throat> um, but as you work your way up, and, and we'll get into that in just a minute, you're paying interest on the bond but never repaying it. And then at the very end of the game, when final scoring is tallied, you are going to lose one point per bond in your possession. So it's kind of interesting that you don't start with money, so it's a little bit difficult 
in that regard. You can borrow at any point, but you also get negative points because you never repay them. So I haven't seen that in a lot of games, but that's uh, an interesting element. The final piece of the game, and then we'll get into walking through several of the several turns, are the railroad operation cards. So these cards provide various things. For example, this is a, a city growth card. And if you get that in your possession, you can add two random goods to a city of your choice. Perfect engineering, uh, I won't go through all of them, but just to give you a, an idea, you can lay up the five track segments in a single turn, use once per turn. Um, typically, you can only lay four. Uh, but anyway, the rail road operation cards provide various bonuses, benefits, enhancing your options, uh, opening some different opportunities, uh, taking an extra turn, bonuses, etc. So in particular, the game always starts with those three at the top. So you see that yellow S indicating that those are starters. Uh, and so the speed record, for example, the first player to make a three link delivery gets three additional points on the income track. So once that happens, this, game, this card is taken out. The, the player who triggered it gets the bonus. Um, in this case, Delivering four different goods in the game gives you four additional bonus points. That's quite large. It's a great one to get. And in this case, the first player to deliver a good gets one additional point. So those three are really scored uh, by the first player who, who triggers them. You get the bonus. The others are, are taken into your hand. So let's talk through and walk through some basic turns. You'll see up here there's a round marker on the board. Um, each turn consists of, of three rounds, after which, of course, the turn starts over. So each player basically will get to take three actions. There's an action summary card that makes it helpful, so let's walk through what those options are. So on your turn, the first and most basic thing you can do as a player would be to borrow money to you know borrow bonds to build track to create a connection now the limits with the track are are as follows you can build uh, you know one connection so between any two cities and you would pay the cost of the underlying terrain right so in this case we have $2,000 for an open train, $2,000 for another open train, and $4,000 for mountains. So for a total of $8,000, I, um, I, I would need to pay to build that connection. Once I do so, we will then place a, a train of that player's color on the track to indicate that they own that connection. So what that connection would allow me to do then is deliver a good across the connection. In this case it doesn't really make sense because you know here, here's a better example. Uh, if I go from Mexico City um, and I need you know obviously the, the correct tiles a little more expensive for that one that's probably a ten thousand dollar track but what this would allow me to do if I built that connection would be to deliver a good um, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but the reason I'm building connections is so that I can deliver a good across the connection, ultimately arriving in a city of its color. So that would be one connection. I would deliver a red good. The red good is then out of the game, placed back into the bag. Right, so that's, that's the most basic and probably the most common task, building track. So the cost to build track are 2000 for open terrain, 3000 for a water, 4000 for a mountain, and then the only other real exception there is in some rare cases. On this map there's only, only a couple, um, I believe here and this line, a ridge. Building across the ridge is an additional 4000. So 4000 plus 4000. 4,000, 4,000, right? So that's a total of 16,000 to collect, to connect these two cities.
that's building track. The other option that I alluded to earlier and mentioned was urbanization. You pick one of the available tiles of any color that you, of your choosing and turn any city, any gray city of your choice into that color. And so what that does is open up the option to deliver goods. So as I mentioned, uh, it would make potentially good strategic sense for a player at the southern end of this board to turn this city into a yellow city because now there are lo uh, a closer location to which they could ship all of these yellow goods. Otherwise, they've got to build a lot of network and get up to the yellow. Um, so that would be one option. So that's urbanization, and that is a $10,000 investment. So that would be another one of your actions. Um, a third option would be to upgrade your locomotive, your engine card. Every player starts with a level one engine. The John Bell, huh? John Bull. The number really indicates the number of connections across which you can ship a good. So that's as far as I can go. I can send one good across one connection when I have a level one train. When I pay the upgrade fee, an additional $5,000 to upgrade my train to a level two, I can now go across two connections. Again, a connection really just being a single train line connecting two cities. So that's another option then is, is upgrading your train card and it goes all the way up I believe to level 8. And the reason you want to do that is you'll score more points. You score one point when you deliver a good for each connection. So the farther you can ship it on a single turn, uh, the, the better off you'll be. The farther up the scoring board you will move. The scoring board um, I did not talk about, but that is what will determine your income as you move up. <clears throat> I forgot to mention also when you are laying tile, you can lay a maximum of four tiles on your turn. So there are cards I mentioned uh, like this Perfect Engineering that allow you to lay up to five, but generally speaking you can lay one complete connection or up to four. So let's just say hypothetically that I'm trying to build a connection um, all the way down uh, from San Luis to Lazaro Cardenas. On my turn I would only be able to build up to four. So Strategically speaking, it might make more sense to try and connect to Mexico City and then on a subsequent turn go from Mexico City into uh, you know, the other city. That, that might make more strategic sense, but there will be times where you're trying to make a long connection. So for a single action, you can build up to four tiles and then on subsequent turns, on subsequent rounds, you can continue to build on that. Uh, again, you can only build make one connection or up to four. So if I were to do that, it would take me two turns, but it, having placed one tile, I do not still get to place an additional three. I've made the connection, that ends my turn. Um, and then of course, you know, paying the fee, which most likely means taking a bond to borrow money to pay for. And obviously I would indicate that I own that track by placing my train on there. So the, the, the final thing you can do, uh, final two things I guess, so for your actions, you always get to do one action on your, on your turn and you will do three before the round starts over. Build a tract, urbanize a city, those are the ur urbanization new city tiles, upgrade your engine, and you can never skip levels, so I would go from a one to a two to a level three, could not jump from a 1 to a level 4. I can deliver, for one of my actions, I can deliver one good cube as far as, as I want. I can't ever pass through a city of the color. So let's just say I had a really long connection that went all the way up to El Paso. I could not optionally take a red, pass through a red, and continue moving. 
as soon as it gets to a city of that color, it's considered delivered, scored, removed from the game, placed back in, in the goods bag. So delivering a good would ultimately be the way I'm going to win the game, and it would require one of my actions. So every time I deliver a good, I would advance on the board. So in that case, blue delivered a red, I would move up one spot. Mm -hmm. The final thing you can do then on your turn for an action is to select one of the wonderful railway railroad operation cards. So the game starts out with two times the number of players in the game. That's these cards. Those three will start the game. They're not selectable. You can only you can only meet the requirements to, to score the points. You cannot actually select them and take them into your hand. First player to do so will score them. But the other four and then each turn after that, an additional one will be added to, to the market, as it were. Um, but the cards can be quite powerful. In fact, here's an example of an extremely powerful card, the Railroad Executive. So the player taking this card will immediately take two actions. So typically taking the card would be your one action, and you would have to you know wait until your, your next turn, the next time it comes around to you before you can actually use the benefit of the card. Some of them with the red X you would have to play immediately um, but that is your action. But the one exception, this being an extremely powerful card, some say maybe overpowered um, and shouldn't be used, the railroad executive card lets you take two immediate additional actions. So that covers all the actions that you can take on your turn. Build a track, urbanize a city, upgrade your engine, deliver one goods cube, or select a railroad operation card. The final thing that I did not mention then is, I guess two things I need to mention. There's always one more rule, right? Um, the beginning of a turn, round one, is always started with a player auction. So there's this handy dandy first player card to indicate who is the first player and that's auctioned off at the beginning of each round. So generally speaking you are bidding for the right to go first. You become the first player and then you would get the choice of playing the first uh, connection, having first rights to select a card. In this case if we were to start this game and uh, we would be bidding on this railroad executive card. Being such a powerful powerful card, um, everyone would want to get that. So it starts with an auction, and let's, let's walk through a couple turns and let me show you how the game works. Um, the last two things I was going to mention, after three rounds then, we would conduct uh, an income phase where you get the income based on the location on the scoring track minus $1,000 per bond that you have taken out. And then after you get that income, we go back to the top and start another round. Okay, and then the final thing, the game will ultimately end when these lovely little pieces, quite thematic, very nice, um, these are empty city markers. Uh, so let's say down in this example I had delivered this blue cube somewhere and it was out of the game. This city now being empty gets an empty city marker. In a two-player game that I have set up here, after seven empty city markers have been placed on the board, the game will end. All right, so it's a, to some degree you have some control possibly over ending the game early um, if you think you're in the lead. Uh, or extending the game because some of the cards will allow you to add additional cubes back onto the board um, so that you have some control over that. So let's jump into a couple of turns so I can show you how the game will work and then we'll wrap up with some final opinion on the game. Okay, so when the game would start, neither player has any money. I have it set up with uh, two players here, blue and red. 
the game will start with an auction. Uh, I don't recall offhand how you determine who begins the bidding, but let's say that red would begin the bidding. So like I said, based on the setup and the card, the card lay, we would want to ultimately bid for this railroad executive card. Right, so let's say that they bid back and forth. Minimum bid, of course, is 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, whatever it goes up to. Let's say at the end of, of the bidding that red wins the bid um, at, at 6,000. We would take two bonds for $10,000. Red would then, of course, get four thousand dollars because they paid six thousand for the first player. So now we will start the round with red taking the first action. So having bid six thousand dollars to go first, the most logical play would be to take the railroad executive card. The red X means I discard it immediately, but the benefit I get is to immediately take two actions. So red would need to decide where on the board makes the most sense to, to build. And in this case, let's, let's make it simple and say that red will build here. So that would be $2,000 and a water tile, um, a water location because of the river, would be $3,000. So that's that's $5,000 I would need to pay for that connection. That's one action. All right, so not having $5,000, I would need to take an additional bond, $5,000 bond. So that's one of my extra actions that I got for playing the card. For the second action, it makes the most sense in this case to deliver a good. And, and here, I can take a purple and deliver to a purple. Right, and the reason that I would want to build and deliver on this first turn is so that I could score this Railroad Era Begins. The first player to deliver a goods cube gains one additional point on the income track. So that would score immediately. I triggered that, and I, I would get it. So normally I would get one point on the income track for having delivered a good across, across one connection. I can only do one connection because there's only one on the board, but also my engine level is only one and so red in that case would over here on the scoring track one for the connection and one for the bonus so you can see that took me from three thousand to four thousand red getting the bonus so that's red's first action they would get a total of three we would now move to blue for blue's turn again starting with no money i would need to borrow any money that uh, I want to build or upgrade or or to do whatever. So blue would want to look at the board early on in the game, probably find a location that would allow for some early easy deliveries to start building up some income. So in this case, um, I don't see a, a ton of real obvious choices here, but let's say maybe blue wants to go up here to the top. Um, I have an option to take a red to a to the red city um, down here on the board maybe I could do blue to blue there aren't actually uh, I hadn't really noticed this before on this map only a couple of black options there aren't any black cubes down here at the bottom so kind of maybe a, a difficult setup for where blue would want to make their first move but let's keep things going no analysis paralysis here 2,000, 4,000, and 6,000. Right, so there's $6,000 spent to build that connection. Blue would, of course, place a train to indicate they own the connection. I would need to then borrow $10,000, so two bonds, getting back four thousand dollars in change right so now we advance the the round marker to round two play continues red uh, I forgot to give uh, nope we just built a connection we haven't delivered anything so blue has not scored so red would now continue now one of the things you'll notice I didn't point out 
a, a big complaint about this game and the production is the mismatching colors. So this city, uh, Salina Cruz, is a purple city matching the purple goods. You can see the vast difference in the purple good versus the purple city. Very different. Similarly, the blue here almost looks more purple, but a blue good would be delivered to a blue city. A lot of people complain about it. I think you get over it fairly quickly. Um, it's just a, a bit of a color mismatch. Mm -hmm. So red would continue. There's not another good I can immediately deliver. So maybe I would build another connection. If I were red, I would go probably 2,000, another 4,000, and an additional 4,000. So a total of 10,000. Red would take probably two more bonds to fund that uh, because I don't have the money. And then, of course, indicate that they own that, that connection. Play would continue, and blue then could and probably would want to ship a good. So let's just take this red. It would ship it across there. That would be one point on the income track. That would finish round two. We would advance the marker. So now players take their third action. And just to show you how this works, let's say that red, knowing that they now have a longer connection available from Salina Cruz, have two connections. In preparation, I would maybe want to upgrade to a level two. So that would cost me $5,000. And the bigger the trains get, the bigger that, that costs. Again, only having 4,000, I would need to take yet another bond. So, so, so far on this first turn, I have taken one, two, three, four, five, six bonds. That's quite a bit. Maybe a little too aggressive. That would be the third and final action for red. Blue now taking its third action uh, up there at the top of the board. Let's say maybe they, they would choose something like this card. This new industry. Immediately place a free new city tile in a gray city of your choice and add two random goods cubes. So that's, that's great. That's essentially the same as urbanization. That would typically cost me $10,000, but I get to do it for free with this card. Blue takes that option, and let's say, having recognized uh, an opportunity at the top of the board, um, there's a lot of blue available. Let's say that they take a blue, they urbanize this city. The second part of that urbanization then is adding two goods from the two cubes from the goods bag. Here we have it to draw them randomly, place them on the board. All right, so that opens up some opportunity. Another red could be delivered here, a black could be delivered there, and then several blues in the region could be delivered to this blue city. So after each player has made their third and final action, income is scored. In this case, red would get $4,000 minus $6,000 for all of their bonds for a, a net gain of negative two. And I would have to pay that to the bank or draw yet another bond to fund that interest. Blue, in this case, would only get $3,000, but they have only taken out two bonds, so they would score $1,000. So hopefully that gives you a feel for the game. To me, this is a great game. Lots of options. Uh, it can be tense. It becomes difficult as you're clogging up, maybe blocking opponents. But that reminds me of one additional rule. It's how these games always go. You don't think of it until it comes up. When you're delivering goods across a network, you can use opponent's track to deliver your goods, but you must own the first connection. So let's just say quickly, uh, as we're winding down, that blue owned this connection. Red could ship this red good across two connections, right? They have a two-strength railroad uh, engine, and in doing so, I would have to own the first connection coming out of the city in order to ship. So blue, blue would not have this option, at least going this direction. They could go in reverse uh, if, a blue, if a purple were available here. Blue would own the first connection. So red could ship this two connections, but they would score one point and blue would score one point. So that's part of the balance of the game is when 
when do you score for yourself? When do you help others? It may be to your benefit uh, because there's no option here. I still, I still get a benefit, but I'm helping my opponent. That's something you'll need to decide. But in summary, this is a fantastic game. Railways of the world. I love the options. I love the tenseness, um, the, the financial difficulty, the options that the player cards provide, the railroad operation cards, um, the maps. There are various maps and expansions. I think I mentioned briefly there's some bonus for connecting uh, the longest routes. You get benefit in some cases for being aggressive, but not overly too aggressive. As we saw here, red is maybe a little overextended early in the game. They'll be paying a lot of interest on all of those bonds. Um, but they're also in a, in a good spot going forward to start earning some additional income. Uh, a, lot, a lot to explore in this game, and one that I hope to play a lot more this year. Railways of the World, in this case, Railways of Mexico. Fantastic game. Um, I rated this uh, 9 or a 10. One I want to play over and over again. It hits the sweet spot for me as far as strategy, um, low luck, replayability, lots of options. Fantastic game, like I said. Um, one I, I thoroughly enjoy and highly recommend. And hopefully one I'll get to play with some of my additional gaming groups soon. That's it for now. Visit us on BoardGameBanter.com or follow us on Twitter at BoardGameBanter. Hopefully you've enjoyed this review. Thank you very much.